Hello everyone, hi. So, today I thought I would make a video showing you a little bit what it is that I carry around with me on a day-to-day -day basis as a literature student. So, I have to read a lot of papers, a lot of books, I also have to write a lot myself and take a bunch of notes. And I try to find analog solutions whenever possible. And then in terms of the things that I do have to acquire, like the <laughs> physical things I am getting into my life, I try to be very intentional with those. So I try to get second hand whenever I can. And if I do have to make a purchase, I, I try to get something that I know is going to last me for years and years. So that is the background of this video. And now let's get into it. Okay, so first item is the bag itself, of course. I've had this for about half a year and I got it at a second hand shop around the corner here. And it's a really cool second hand shop that actually works without money. So you can just bring things there and you can take things home and there is like no money involved at all. Um, and I saw this leather bag and I was like, ooh, this is <laughs> really chic. And it was around the time when I started studying and both of my girlfriends that were with me agreed that, you know, it really suits <laughs> the lifestyle change to have such a, such a pretty bag. Um, I really love it. So it's made out of leather. It is apparently from the brand Leonard Haydn. Haydn? Yeah, Leonard Haydn, Germany. 1891. I don't know if that tells you anything. I think I googled it once. They still seem to sell bags. But I do love it because the bag has a lot of compartments in it, like little zippers that you can open and close and it just looks so elegant. <laughs> Sometimes I wear it um, turned around so it's completely black and yeah, it's sturdy and I, I've fallen really in love with it. Sometimes, however, I also use this backpack. It's just like a roll top backpack. I have no idea what brand it is. <laughs> um, it's just better to carry when my bag is really heavy. I like to have it distributed on both shoulders. So as for the content of the bag, the first and most important thing is my folder. So <laughs> this is probably the most touched item in my household. Um, it is like a very slim, I think, leather folder that I have found in my parents' house. Um, I know it has been there ever since I was really little, so it's at least 25 years old, but it might as well be like 40 years old for all I know. And what I really love about this is that it's so extremely sturdy, but bendy at the same time. It's very slim but it holds all of the notes that I need. So when you open it on the first page, I always have my week plan. Um, I just put an empty one there so <laughs> you don't see all the details of my week, but usually that is uh, scribbled full of things. And then I just put the notes that I know that I'm gonna need for that day. So if I have to read a paper, I have it printed in here and I take it with me to class, I take any notes I took with me to class um, and when I get back home I just put them back into my big folder. So this is the big folder of the semester and I just switch around notes like that. Yeah and then in the back I also always have a few just empty pages, 10 or so for notes that I'm taking in class. I spend some time every evening just switching out those pieces of paper, putting the ones back that I use during the day and putting the ones that I need for the next day in here. So I always know that everything I need is in here. Then what is usually in my bag as of lately is my Norwegian notebook. This has all the vocabularies that I'm currently learning in the front in little rows like this and then grammar is in the back. And yeah, just when I learn a language I really enjoy having it like all written down in one place. I somehow don't want to deal with a bunch of 
<laughs> loose pieces of paper. Um, so yeah, this is working really well for me. Now, the toolbox. So this is my pencil case. Uh, it's made out of leather, very simple. And I just got it at a local shop. And this holds all my <laughs> essential writing tools. So probably the most important one is my fountain pen. This is a Lamy Joy fountain pen. It's very lightweight. It is actually a calligraphy fountain pen, but I got a different tip for it. And the good thing about these Lamy pens is that you can change the tip yourself. Um, it does take a little bit of practice, but I know now how to pull <laughs> this tip off and put the calligraphy one on. Not that I do that very often, but it's a possibility. Um, it's a little bit of a mess, but it's fine. And usually I just have the thin tip on. Um, yeah, and I love it. You know, I, I also got this when I started studying because I learned how to write with a Lamy fountain pen. I think they're very common around here. Lamy is a German brand, if I remember correctly. And yeah, I just, I felt a little bit nostalgic and wanted to write with a Lamy again. And I really, I really like it. It also wasn't too expensive. I think this cost like 28 euros or something. Then of course I have a lot of ink cartridges in there. So when I'm running out of ink that I can put another one in. And then I just have crayons and colored pens to you know, when I'm taking notes to highlight certain things, to make my notes look a little bit more interesting. Um, I switch those up from time to time I, and I try to have a little bit of a variety with me. There's also some sticky notes in here. I don't particularly like them. Um, they're too bright for me. I basically never use them, <laughs> but they're still in here. I don't know. I have a thing with sticky notes where I find them all way too bright, all these neon colors. Mm, and then the ones that aren't, they're just made out of plastic. I also don't like that. So, you know, if you have a good tip on <laughs> desaturated sticky notes that are kind on the eyes, um, let me know. I'm in the market for those. <laughs> then of course my beloved Jess horse and some highlighters. Those are extremely important for me. I never read without a highlighter. <laughs> um, and it took me some time to get ones that I really like. So those are the Faber-Castell ones that are like in those glittery, <laughs> girly glittery colors, but they're great because they're extremely soft. Um, the colors are very like it's 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 the opposite of neon like there's a gray one oh, I actually have it here this shiny silver it's just it highlights but it's it's just light gray you know what I mean it's not screaming <laughs> um, and I really like that they also last for quite a long time I've had that problem before with those pastel ones that I felt like they were always immediately empty I mean, I still don't like that it's using like a lot of plastic, but I don't really know an alternative to that. Um, if you do know, let me know. <laughs> then of course, I always have a couple of books with me. I'm obsessed currently with The Sorrows of Young Werther again by Goethe. And for a seminar I'm reading, I'm reading Heldenplatz by Thomas Bernhard. So I don't personally mind just throwing those in my bag. I know people have those cases that protect books. I don't know. I don't have a problem with my books looking used. I dog ear them. I mark things. I write in them. So I also don't mind if the corners are a little bit rough. So, you know, my books I just throw in there like that. However, if I do have a book that belongs to someone else or to the library, I usually put it into this pillowcase. I got this at a secondhand store. It's like a silk pillowcase. I find it so extremely pretty. <laughs> so if I have a book that I definitely don't want to become dirty or anything, I just put it in here. This is um, a book from the library, for example, that I have to bring back. 
what comparative literature students should read and then I just like fold it up and stuff it in my bag and that's good enough for me. Yeah, next up is my water bottle. This is a Hydro Flask insulated bottle. It holds 0.7 liters and I love it. <laughs> I usually make tea in the morning, like a green tea, and then I bring it and sip it throughout the morning and I refill this bottle two or three times a day, definitely saving me a lot of waste. Oh yeah, this by the way keeps beverages hot and cold, so you can also put like a cold smoothie in there and it will stay cold. Mine has this like sippy cap I really like because Again, I'm a lot on tr public transport and I don't want to like screw it open and risk spilling everything on myself and other people. And I've had a Hydro Flask before, a one liter one, and I think I've had it for six years. <laughs> Actually, seven years. I've had it for seven years and the only reason why I don't have it anymore is because I lost it. Not because... It, it broke or anything. So those are extremely sturdy and just so worth it for me. I mean, I think this one costs like 45 euros, but it's just so much better for the environment. On a similar note, I have my lunch bag here. This is a lunch bag from Mont Bento and it holds this double decker lunch box. Um, this is great because if I do go to uni, I'm out of the house all day and I need a lot of food. <laughs> so I, how it works is that you, you take this little scrunchie off and then it, it opens into the two different compartments and it closes really well. There's no leaking. It holds tight really well and that's <laughs> so important because with all the other things that I'm carrying in my bag, it's just a disaster when food is leaking. Uh, I mean, it's always a disaster. I've had that situation a couple of times when I started studying and then I thought, you know what, this has to stop. And <laughs> I'm just gonna get these lunch boxes, even though if they're a little bit expensive, I know they're serving me for a long, long time. They work really well. You can put them in the dishwasher. Um, I think even in the microwave, even though I don't have one. Mm, I have cutlery with it and yeah, usually I put two different things like a more breakfasty dish and a more lunch dish in there and then in the bag I put like an extra apple and a muesli bar or something <laughs> and then usually that's still not enough food. <laughs> so in terms of my laptop, I do sometimes bring it when I have to edit a video or there's something that I know I have to do on my laptop. But usually I don't. I try to leave it at home as much as I can, simply because it adds weight to my bag and I don't need it. You know, if I have everything printed that I need and I have it in my folder, um, then I have my phone for emergencies. And yeah, I, I really prefer not having my laptop with me wherever I go. <laughs> and I know a lot of people say, well, that's so expensive to print everything. Um, I, I understand where you're coming from, but to me it is just worth it. Um, I have a printer at home and I have like a library card where I can print things at the library. And I, I probably spend maybe 100 euros a year on all that printing and copying. And that is just worth it to me. <laughs> like I love having printed notes if you see those like folders in the back that's all the notes I've ever taken all the things I've ever printed and I absolutely love that I also go through the trouble of printing pictures and just because I know that I'll still have those years and years and years from now um, I also know where they physically are that's very important to me and I just cannot deal with um, reading <laughs> things on the computer screen. I know there's like tablets that are easier on the eyes, but to me it's just not graspable. Like if I know I have to read a 30 page article, I have to be able to 
see what that is in my hand and the progress I'm making by <laughs> by putting those papers away. It just it doesn't work the same on a device in my experience. Uh, if I do take my laptop with me, I put it into this little pouch that my sister-in-law has been sewing for me. She um, has a sewing business and uh, works with like all organic materials. That's very nice. <laughs> So then I just have my wallet and keys. This is a wallet I got um, secondhand at some point. It's made out of leather. I really love it. It's not too big. I like how it looks. <laughs> um, I don't think there's much to say about my keys. <laughs> and headphones. Those are just the only headphones that fit my tiny ears. Um, and my phone. So that's the ones I have. Then I have my passport with me usually a couple of lip products like a chapstick and a lipstick or something like that and then i have some emergency medicine those homeopathic sore throat pills that really work for me and a couple of emergency painkillers and very important earplugs and then depending on the day and depending on what i'm doing and who i'm meeting i might throw one of my smaller analog cameras in there just to take some nice pictures and then the last thing is that i might bring a pair of sunglasses with me if it's a beautiful day so that sums up everything <laughs> that is in my bag if you have any questions or any comments i would love to read them down below and other than that i'll see you again very soon bye bye